Oh, you know what? Wait a second. First of all, before I share my screen, let's talk about it for a second. Um, what what do you know about the cardiovascular system? Um, the heart, the blood, the blood vessels, anything? Anybody know anything about any of those um, things before we get started? And it can be anything, one thing, two things. Go ahead, Kathleen. I saw you unmute yourself. It's four chambers. <laughs> okay, you know the heart is. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. That's correct. Anything else? Any, what do you ladies know about the blood, the heart, anything? Nothing? Okay, it's okay. All right, I know some, some people might look at the blood as just this red stuff that flows throughout our bodies, but, you know, it's a little bit more than that. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And um, one thing I will uh, mention is that you'll see that it says cardiovascular, a.k.a. circulatory system. So sometimes you'll hear them refer to interchangeably. That's why I put both there, because the cardiovascular system technically um, refers to the, the heart and the blood vessels, and then the circulatory system refers to the blood. Um, but the cardiovascular system itself, it does uh, comprise of everything. So I just wanted you to be um, um, to, to, to just have a heads up that you may hear them use interchangeably and sometimes separately. Like even some textbooks will list them together. And then some textbooks will have the cardiovascular system in one chapter, and then the next chapter is the circulatory system. So I just wanted you all to, just a, just a FYI. All right, so let's talk about some of the structures of the cardiovascular system. So if I was to ask you, what are some of the structures of the cardiovascular system? You need to know that it is responsible for pumping blood throughout the body, um, transporting oxygen throughout the body to the organs, transports nutrients, helps filter out the kidneys, transports waste, also works with immunity and the lymphatic system to fight off infection. And so that's why I include the lymphatic system to talk about today as well, because they do work together. So what are the structures of the cardiovascular system? You have the heart, the blood, and then also the blood vessels. So the heart is about the size of an adult fist. So if you ball up your fist, make a fist, it's about that size of an adult fist, so it's small. It's made up of four chambers, as Kathleen said, you were correct. Um, the four chambers of the heart are the left and right atria and the right and left ventricles. Now, the atria, the atria, that is the top part of the heart. And then um, um, you all will actually um, um, have a... Um, a heart project coming up, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more after we go over the lesson today, but you do have a heart project going up, coming up where you see how this heart is labeled here. The project is going to be where um, you're going to have to look up a blank heart and then you'll label the part. So this is just the, the basic parts of the heart, the atrium and the ventricle and the aorta, but there are other parts of the heart here that you all will label, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, but anyway, so the Atria is the top part of the heart, the top chambers of the heart. The ventricles are the bottom chambers of the heart, okay? And then you have the aorta here. Now, the aorta, that's your largest blood vessel. That is the blood vessel that actually transports the blood to the body um, from the heart. So basically, guys, for those of you that don't know, every time our heart beats, right, and we all can feel our heart beating in our chest, every time it beats, it's literally pumping blood, right? And so when you go to the doctor and they're checking your um, your pulse rate, your heart rate, what they're checking is they're checking to see how many times a minute your heart beats. And that lets them know, you know, how many times a minute that your heart is pumping out blood. So as your heart is pumping out blood throughout the body, that blood is going to each organ. It's supplying that that organ with blood. It's supplying it with oxygen to keep those organs um to keep those organs, organs functioning the way that they're supposed to. And so as we go through some of these body systems, you'll begin seeing how they work together. Um, and and I, I mentioned to you ladies before, like, you know, the body, like, it's amazing. I love this, this stuff. I love anatomy and I love the heart and the blood system, period. But I just love the way our body is just, it's just so smart and it knows what to do. Like, even with the blood, as, as the blood is pumping throughout our bodies and it is, you know, supplying our organs with um, nutrients and oxygen and things like that. It's also being filtered by the kidneys. And the kidneys, they know what, what part of the blood is going to end up being waste and what part of the blood is going to end up back into the body and, and, and circulating again. And, and one of the reasons why 
the blood is called the circulatory system is because it's circulating throughout our body, right? And I, I heard somebody type something in the chat. Let me make sure I'm not missing any questions. Okay, your video keeps going offline. Okay, got you. Okay, no problem. Um, so um, that is why they refer to the, the to the to the blood system as circulatory system because, like I said, it circulates throughout the throughout the body, from the heart to the body. Now, the blood that's going toward the heart. Let's talk about these blood vessels for a second. Um, so, the structures we said are the heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. So we talked a little bit about the heart, right? The heart is responsible for pumping blood throughout the body. Every time the heart beats, it is pumping blood throughout the body, right? So that's the heart. Now let's talk about the blood vessels. The blood vessels, we have three different types, okay? We have arteries, we have veins, and then we have capillaries. So you ladies, you probably heard of arteries. I'm pretty sure you heard of veins. Every one of us have gone to get our blood drawn. They draw blood from our veins and then capillaries. So arteries, they are the blood vessels that carry um, oxygenated blood away from the heart to the body, okay? Now, all of our blood vessels, there that's how the blood gets through the body, through the blood vessels. So our blood vessels, um, the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries, they are the they they are what is responsible for carrying the blood throughout the body. Okay. Now, arteries, they carry the blood, like it says here, away from the heart to the body. And then veins carries the oxygenated blood away from the body toward the heart. Now you know, what do I mean? You may wonder, what do I mean by oxygenated and deoxygenated? So when our blood is, is, is going toward our heart, once it goes into the heart, it then goes, it comes through the right side of the heart, and then it goes into our lungs. So once the blood goes into the lungs, that's where it picks up oxygen, okay? So it picks up oxygen, and then it exits out the left side of our heart, and then that oxygenated blood goes to the rest of the body to, to um, provide the body with oxygen. You get it? So those arteries are what's carrying the oxygenated blood away from the heart. Once that blood has picked up oxygen from the lungs, the arteries carry that blood away from the heart through the aorta. Remember I mentioned that aorta is the largest blood vessel in the body. That is what actually transport the blood from the heart to the body. Um, and then the veins, the, the veins is carrying deoxygenated blood away from the body toward the heart, okay? Um, and think of arteries away. So if you see a question that says, which of the blood vessels carry oxygenated blood away? Or just blood in general away from the heart. Think of arteries A away, veins carry it um, um, toward the heart, Ox arteries away from the heart, veins toward the heart. And the capillaries, those are small blood vessels that connect the veins and the arteries together, okay? And I just put a note here, um, just to remember that that aorta, that is the largest blood vessel in the body, and it transports the blood from the heart to the body, as I mentioned. So again, that was the heart and the blood. These are the three structures of the cardiovascular system. That was the heart and the blood. The heart pumps blood all throughout the body. Now, how does that blood get through the body? By way of blood vessels. Now, blood vessels, they have um, valves in, 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 the, in the blood vessels that keep the blood flowing a certain way. Now, there are some instances where a patient may have um, a condition which causes the blood to um, not circulate in the direction. It, it will cause it to actually circulate backward. Uh, one of those conditions is called, um, what is it, mitral valve regurgitation, where the blood will, um, will, will flow backwards instead of going forward. And in that case, a lot of those patients, they end up needing surgery to correct those problems. Um, okay, so that's the blood vessels. And then now let's talk about the blood. Now the blood, I'd say that one for last because the blood is a little bit more complex, right? The, the heart and the blood vessels are pretty straightforward, but the blood is a little bit more complex because um, you'll see in a moment. But so the blood is made up of 55% plasma. Okay, now this is what blood is made up of. 55% of blood is plasma. Okay, that is the liquid portion of blood. All right, plasma. And see, I told you I was going to. Um, oh, I put it. Oh, yeah, I put it there. I was about to add it there. We, okay, I put it there. 
So plasma is the liquid portion of blood, which I put it in. Um, I think I'm going to move this here because this looks a little confusing. This looks like I'm saying that 10% nutrients is the liquid portion. So let me move that right here. So it's a liquid portion of blood. Yeah, that's better because that, that looked a little confusing. Okay, so plasma, that is the liquid portion of blood, okay? And then that other 45% of blood, that is composed of your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and then your platelets. So you, you can see those here. Let me um see if I let me make this just a little bit bigger. All right, here we go. All right. So 55% plasma. Okay, that's a liquid portion of blood. 45%, that other 45% contains your red blood cells or RBCs, white blood cells, WBCs, and then your platelets, okay? Now, plasma, which is the liquid portion of blood, that is made up of 90% water and that other 10% is just other nutrients and things like that. So a lot of people get confused when they get to this part because of all of these percentages, okay? And it's okay. I'm going to just go over it one more time. So we got blood. So whole blood, we want to say whole blood. Whole blood, when we say whole blood, we're just talking about whole blood as in plasma along with the red blood cells. Because those of you that's going on to medical assistant and you begin to, um, if you're working in a lab where you're drawing blood, you may have to separate um, the plasma from the uh, red blood cells. This is how this looks right here. Um, for those of you that took, let me see if Shanrika is on here, because I know she took phlebotomy. Okay, Shanrika is not on here. But anyway, for those of you that go into medical assistant or even phlebotomy, um, you'll learn more about that separating the liquid portion of blood from the um, red blood cells, white blood cells, and the platelets. Okay, so, and then plasma, which is the liquid portion of blood, is made up of 90% water and that other 10% is like nutrients and proteins and things like that, okay? So that's that. So this right here is the blood vessel. This is how the blood is um, transported throughout the body. This is a blood vessel. And inside of the blood vessel, you have your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets, okay? Now let's talk a little bit more about those blood cells. All right, let's start with the platelets. Now, this is, um, oh, yes, ladies, you definitely going to have to read, download this because I just realized I, I made a mistake right here. Um, I put prevent clotting. It's, that's supposed to be promote clotting. I'm so sorry. So, yeah, so, ladies, which, whatever you have right now, if you're writing on it or whatever, that's fine. But just know as soon as we're done this, I'm going to re-upload this because that should not say prevent clotting. It should say promote clotting, Okay. So um, platelets are fragments of cells that promote clotting. So whenever you get, let's say you get like a, um, um, let's say like a cut on your finger or whatever, your platelets are little fragments of cells. They'll start coming together to clot so that you won't bleed out, okay? So they promote clotting. They don't prevent clotting. Now, another name for platelets are thrombocytes. Thrombo is another good medical term to add to your list if you haven't already. Sites, many of you probably already have, which refer to cells. So thrombo is a medical term that literally means clotting, okay? So those are your thrombocytes, your platelets, little fragments of cells. Now let's talk about a few diseases of the platelets, okay? Um, you have um, what's called thrombocytopenia. Now penia, we've talked about that several times already, and that is one of the terms that's on your quiz today. Penia means what? Decrease or lack of. So thrombocytopenia means a decreased platelet or thrombocyte count. Now let me ask you ladies this. If, if a person has thrombocytopenia, a condition in which they have a lack of platelets or their platelet count is low, what kind of things do you think they will probably experience? knowing what platelets are responsible for, what do you ladies think anybody can answer? So somebody with thrombocytopenia. Uh, let's see, who was that? Go ahead, Deanna. I'm taking a wild guess. Is it blood clotting? So they have a lack of platelets. They oh, okay. 
So if they have a lock of platelets, because remember what, what we just said platelets do. So if their platelet count is low. They will have uh, so like anemia or something like that. Oh, no, not so anemia. We're going to talk about it in a second when we get to the red blood cells. Okay, um, go ahead, Natasha. So it'll be like a lot of hemorrhaging, there'll be excessive bleeding. Yeah, so very similar to right below with hemophilia. Yeah, so a person who has a lack of platelets, and so because platelets, they are responsible for forming clots. Um, if you have a decreased count, then you are a person who would easily bleed, so you may easily have a nosebleed, right? Or you may easily, you know, when you do bleed, it's hard to stop, right? And so it's very similar to hemophilia, which we kind of talked about the first day we went over medical term. It's a platelet condition um, where a person um, easily bleeds. So a person who easily bleeds, like maybe when they're brushing their teeth, you know, um, you know, um, seeing blood while you brush your teeth is a sign of, um, of gum disease, but it can also be a sign of you know, especially if it's a lot of blood, easily bleeding. Also, like I said, nosebleeds. Um, and then when you do bleed um, and you're not on blood thinners, now some people we, you know, are on blood thinners. People that are on blood thinners, because they have a clotting disorder, um, now they will easily be bleed because of the, the blood thinners that they're on. But just the, um, a person who's not on blood thinners, they could have a um, platelet disorder. And then thrombocythemia now that actually refers to an elevated platelet count okay so in that case they are they may end up being put on blood thinners because they are clotting too much okay they are clotting way too well way too much okay so those are a few diseases of the platelets or thrombocytes and remember thrombo means clotting all right, so now let's talk about these red blood cells. We kind of talked a little bit about them on the first day when we talked, when we went over um, erythro. We said erythro means red. So RBCs are erythrocytes. Now the red blood cells are what gives blood its red color. Red blood cells also contain oxygen. So the red blood cells also contains um, oxygen. Um, red blood cells also contain um, hemoglobin and iron. So, Deanna, you mentioned anemia. Anemia is a disorder of the red blood cell in which a person has a low red blood cell count. And because red blood cells contain iron, when a person has a low red blood cell count, they in turn have low iron, okay? Um, it's very common. I know many people who have anemia. Some of you may have suffered with it before or currently um, or probably know somebody. You know, people with anemia, they tend to be very fatigued, cold and things like that. Um, and then sickle cell. So let's talk about sickle cell. Now, I'm sure many of you have, have heard of sickle cell and many of you have heard of sickle cell anemia. Um, and sickle cell anemia is, of course, when you have both sickle cell and anemia. Now, sickle cell are... Um, a reg irregular shaped um, red blood cells. Now, let me just go back up here for one second. You see how these red blood cells are shaped, right? When a person has anemia, I'm sorry, when a person has sickle cell, instead of being shaped normally, they will be actually shaped like sickles, like they have sharp edges. And as they're going through the blood vessels, um, the one of the reasons why, well, the reason why um, people with sickle cell, they have what's called those uh, sickle cell crises where they're in a whole lot of pain is because as those blood cells are flowing through those blood vessels, those those sharp edges, um, those, those, those sickle shaped edges are actually um, rubbing up against the blood cells. And so that's one of the reasons why they have a lot of pain is because those cells are literally shaped like sickle. That's where the name sickle cell come from because they're shaped like sickles. Um, and then another um, disease of the red blood cells is called thalassemia. So in this case, the person has um, low hemoglobin and also um, they could have an enlarged spleen. Now the spleen is responsible for storing red blood cells and also they it also breaks down red blood cells as well. 
Um, and now white blood cells, so that was the red blood cells, that was the platelets, the red blood cells, and the white blood cells. Now the white blood cells, so we say the, the platelets were responsible for clotting. The red blood cells are what gives blood, it is what gives blood its red color, right? Also contains oxygen. Now the white blood cells, um, they are what fights off infections in our bodies, okay? Now this is what's gonna take us into the lymphatic system because the lymphatic system is also known as our immune system, okay? So white blood cells are known as our body's first line of defense. Now, whenever we have something trying to invade our body that our body does not recognize or the body recognizes as bad, um, our white blood cells, they start getting together and they start fighting off whatever that is that's trying to, um, that's trying to invade our body. So, you know, many of you have probably went to the emergency room before and you were sick. And the first thing they said, well, let me draw your blood. One of the things they check for is what's called a CBC, a complete blood count. And they check your white blood cell count because when you have an increased white blood cell count, all of a sudden that can indicate that there's some type of um, infection going on in your body because your white blood cells have increased so much because they're trying to fight off whatever's happening. Okay. Um, now, some diseases of the white blood cells, um, we have leukopenia. Again, penia refers to decrease. So a person with leukopenia, they have a decreased white blood cell count, right, or a lack of white blood cells. So they're more, of course, prone to infection because they their white blood cells are not where they need to be. Or, and, of course, if they're not where they need to be, they won't effectively, they won't be able to effectively fight off infections. And then leukemia, that is actually a blood cancer, a blood cancer of the white blood cells, and it starts in the bone marrow. So that's leukemia. I'm pretty sure many of you have heard of leukemia. Okay, so that was the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and the platelets, all right? Um, any questions about that? This is about to take us into the lymphatic system. So I want to see if anybody have any questions about that. So you understand the structures, right, of the cardiovascular system, which is the heart, the blood, and the blood vessels. The heart pumps blood throughout the body. It has four, four chambers, as we mentioned. The top is the atria. The bottom are the ventricles. Um, blood does enter the body um, through the right side, and then it goes through the lungs, picks up oxygen. It goes through a few more steps, but I'm just keeping it simple because that's going to be a part of your project next week. Um, but it goes, it, it enters through the... Um, through the right side of the heart, goes through the lungs, picks up oxygen, then exits the left side of the heart, okay? Um, blood vessels, the arteries, the veins, and the capillaries. Arteries carry blood away from the heart. Veins carry blood toward the heart, right? And the capillaries are the small blood vessels that connect the veins and the arteries. The aorta is the largest blood vessel in the body. Um, we have the blood. Remember, blood is made up of 50% I'm sorry, 55% plasma, which is the liquid portion of blood, and that other 45% are your red blood cells, your white blood cells, and your platelets. Now, plasma is made up of 90% water, okay, and that other 10% nutrients. Let me share my screen again. Now, we're going to talk about the lymphatic system, which is, lymphatic system is pretty simple. That's why it's, it's easy to talk about these two together, because the white blood cells literally takes us into the lymphatic system, okay? And why? Because there are five types of white blood cells, which we don't have to get into all of those, but we have neutrophils, basophils, eosinophils, monocytes, and then lymphocytes. The lymphocytes are what we're going to focus on because the lymphocytes are a part of the lymphatic system, okay? So lymphocytes are a type of white blood cells that are a part of the lymphatic system, also known as the immune system. So if you hear immune system, they're talking about the lymphatic system because our lymphatic system is responsible, which it shows us here under functions, is responsible for the body's immune response, okay? Um, other functions include, it includes transports and removes waste and then fights off infections. Now those are the functions. Now what are the structures of the lymphatic system? We have the lymphocytes, which we say are the white blood cells. We have lymph, which we're going to talk about in a moment. We have lymph nodes, 
lymphatic vessels, and then we have the lymphatic organs. And let me just add lymphatic organs and structure. Okay. Um, lymphocytes, white blood cells. Now, this is very important because you can see me ask this again. Um, lymphocytes, there are two types. You have B cells and then you have T cells. Okay. B cells are memory cells. T cells are the killers. Okay. Now remember that. Highlight. Well, when you get your when when I re-upload this and you download it again, highlight that. But yeah, B cells are memory cells. T cells are killer cells. So when I say B cells are memory cells, so um, basically, remember I mentioned how the white blood cells they fight off infections. Now lymphocytes, what they do, the B cells and the T cells, whenever something and um, what they call antigens try to get into our body. Now, an antigen is anything that is um, foreign to the body, right? And it doesn't necessarily have to be bad because even our, our, our blood types are considered antigens, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, the blood types, but even our blood types are considered antigens. So antigens is really anything that's, that the body recognizes as, um, as foreign, right? So what the B cells do, they form antibodies against um, the antigen. So anything that form, that comes into our bodies, our bodies form antibodies against it. To, to, so that way we won't get it again, right? Even though we will, we can get certain things again. The and the purpose of the antibodies are to, um, and we don't get deep into that here. But one of the ways that lymphocytes um, remembers antigens is that they will literally take the form of that antigen, like literally, like take the form of the so let's just say that 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 antigen is shaped like a t like a lowercase t right the antigen whatever that is coming into our body the um antibody will literally turn into that shape and like attach itself to it and the body remembers those cells so that's what the b cells do they create antibodies so that way we won't get it again um and just like you know some um the way um um, vaccines work well. The way the way they I don't I don't know. I, they say the COVID vaccine works differently, but the way most vaccines work is that it pretty much creates the antibodies for us, and it they put the antibodies in our body so that the antibodies can fight against those antigens. Okay, instead of our body our B cells making those antibodies, the um, vaccine um, does that. For us, and so we won't get it. Um, and then T cells are the killer cells. So T cells are the cells that's actually attacking those antigens. So that's the difference between those two. Okay, lymph. Lymph is a clear fluid. Now, some of you probably are noticing some similarities between the blood, the um, cardiovascular system, and the lymphatic system, right? They both have vessels. They both have fluid. Like the cardiovascular system has the blood, right? That circulates throughout the body. They have um, the cardiovascular system has the blood vessels, the lymphatic system has the lymphatic vessels that carry the lymph, you know, so they are kind of similar. All right, so the lymph is a clear fluid that contains white blood cells, proteins, and other nutrients, okay, and it is made from the from plasma. However, it doesn't, you know, constantly circulate like, like, pla like blood does. So um, lymph comes from plasma. And then it circulates. Well, it doesn't circulate all like continuously like the blood. What it does is it comes from plasma. It goes to the lymph nodes um, and it gets filtered and then it ends up back into the blood. So it circulates in a way because it does go back into the blood. But lymph itself is not a continuously circulating fluid like blood is. Because um, like I said, blood can blood will get filtered out the kidney, get filtered out by the kidneys, but it will also some uh, of the blood will also end up back into the body. All right, so lymph nodes, those are bean-shaped glands, filters, and cleans out lymph. We have about 600 all throughout the body. The lymphatic system, I'm sorry, the lymphatic vessels are what transports the lymph throughout the body, um, the lymph nodes, and back into the blood. And I have a picture here. So um, lymph nodes, like they said, we have about 600 all throughout our body. So cervical lymph nodes. Now cervical, this is another good one to add to your um, add to your list. When you see cervical, you may think of we're all women here. You'll probably think of the cervix, right? But cervical, 
as in C E R V I C slash O, that actually refers to the neck. Okay. So when you see this cervical here, this is, we're not referring to like the cervix or like cervical cancer or anything like that. We're talking about the neck. Um, axillary here are those lymph nodes under the arm. So you, you ladies ever notice you go to the doctor when you're sick, they, they check for, you know, they may feel up under here. They're feeling your cervical lymph nodes because when your lymph nodes are swollen, they can indicate infection that something is going on. So you have lymph nodes um, here, your axillary lymph nodes here, and then you have your um, inguinal lymph nodes here, like the growing area. Some of you already added inguinal to your list of words. But yeah, that's your groin area. Here's your spleen here. And then your liver. Your spleen is a part of your lymphatic system. Also your thymus gland. And then it doesn't show it here, but your tonsils and your adenoids are also a part of your lymphatic system. Um, let me go back up. I think I skipped that. Okay, yeah, I did skip that. So your thymus gland, which I showed you ladies here, that is your thymus gland. It is responsible for producing T cells. Um, your tonsils, you know, you all know where your tonsils are. So those are not just little things that just hang from your throat. Those are actually there to keep invaders from entering the body through your mouth. Okay. And then the adenoids posterior to the nose. Oh, this is a, okay. So if it's posterior to the nose, this is a good um little quick review. Posterior to the nose. If it's if the adenoids are posterior to the nose, what does that mean? Anybody can answer that. The adenoids are posterior to the nose. Posterior to the nose. What does that mean? The back of the nose? Uh huh. It's behind the nose. Yep. Behind the nose. Yep. Thank you. That was good. Okay. So the adenoids, the tonsils are there to keep invaders from entering the body through your mouth. Adenoids are there to keep the um, invaders from entering the body through your nose. Okay. And then your spleen, those are where red blood cells are stored. Also, where, blood, where bad blood cells are broken down, okay? So bad blood cells are also broken down by the spleen. And then that's that picture there. Some diseases in disorders of the lymphatic system. So you have um, lymphedema. That is the buildup of lymph. Um, it causes a lot of swelling because of that buildup. Some of you probably have seen somebody with that. Um, 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 lymphing, um, lymphangitis, the inflammation of the lymphatic system. Um, lymphoma is a cancer of the lymphatic system. And then tonsillitis, many of you, are, that's very common. Um, inflammation of the tonsils. That's tonsillitis. Itis, you all know what that is. Okay, so let's talk about these blood types for a second. So now, remember I told you um, even our blood types are considered antigens um, or pro well, proteins that are, that are considered antigens. Um, so your blood type is very important to know because um, your blood type, first of all, I mentioned that, you know, anything that's foreign to our body, our body's going to fight against it. The reason why it's so important to know your blood type is because if you were to ever need a blood transfusion, and you receive blood that is not compatible with your blood type, it can be fatal because your body is going to fight against it and it's, and can, it's going to end up being fatal. So it's very important to know your blood types. Um, now, I included on Blackboard, if you look under handouts and resources, you probably already saw it. There's a picture there that shows you everybody that can donate to who on that picture. So make sure you download that. Um, the blood type AB positive is considered the universal recipient, meaning they can receive from anybody. So if you're AB positive, you can receive anybody's blood. You can receive A, B, A, B, and O. Um, blood type O negative is considered the universal donor, meaning that they can give to all blood types. So AB positive can can receive from all. The universal recipient can receive from anybody. O negative can give to anybody. So O negative is is kind of like a, a like a running joke. Like people that are O negative, like they don't want nobody to know because like blood banks, like they want their blood because they don't have to worry about matching them. Like they can give O negative blood to anybody. Now, what do we mean when we say um? negative and positive, right? So 
what does it mean to be AB positive or AB negative or O positive or O negative? Now, um, what determines that is what's called the RH factor, or you may hear RH antigen. Um, that is another blood type. Now, if you, so I should say like for me, I am, my blood type is O, but I'm O positive. So when you have the RH factor present, then that's what makes you positive or negative. That's what makes you positive. If the RH factor is not present, then you are RH negative. Now, there are more people, um, let me see, it is actually rare to be um, negative. So there are more people that's RH negative than there are positive. So let me let me make it more simple for you. So any of you ladies have a, um, that have children, at one point they tested you to see if you were RH positive. If you were RH positive, there was nothing else they needed to do, right? However, if you are RH negative, they consider that because it's so rare, they had to give what's called a Rogam jab because what happens is that if you are RH negative, they, they are automatically going to assume that your baby will be RH positive because mostly everybody is RH positive. So, so, protect, so to protect you and baby, they give that Rogam shot to prevent your body from fighting against the fetus because your body can, will literally fight against your babies when it recognizes that it's not the same blood type. So for those of you who maybe um, was RH negative and you had to get the shot, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, for me, I was RH positive. As I mentioned, I'm O positive, so I didn't have to get the shot. But yeah, so because it's so rare to be RH negative, um, the, the doctors, they will automatically assume that your baby will be positive and they're going to give you that Rogam, um, that Rogam shot to, to uh, prevent your body from fighting against your baby. So again, if the RH factor is, is present in a person's blood, they're considered RH positive. And so if your blood type is AB and you have the RH factor, you are AB positive. If your blood type is AB and you don't have it, you, you will be considered AB negative, okay? Same thing for A and B. If your blood type is A and you're RH positive, you're A positive, okay? Um, and the presence of the RH antigen determines whether your blood, oh, I just meant, I just said that. A pregnant mother who is RH negative receives Rogam to prevent her body from fighting against the fetus who may or may not be RH negative. Are you ladies still with me? Did I lose anybody? Is everybody still here? Yep. Yes. Yes. Door. All right. I just want to make sure I don't. I'm going to download this so I can re-upload it. So everybody that already downloaded it, make sure you re-upload it because I'm about to do that right now. In the meantime, we're going to um, take a few minutes break and we're going to get ready 